Of an 11, the Hawaii Tourism Authority has issued those new tourism marketing contracts and tourism management contracts with a new role for the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. And joining us from CNHA is Tyler Gomes. I'm going to assume that you probably read the contract more closely and alertly than most of us have. So how <laughs> would you define what your role is going to be going forward? Uh, thank you so much for having us here. I think really at the core of it is embracing this idea that destination stewardship, which is sort of the subject matter area for the contract, shifts us out of the paradigm of sustainable tourism and moves us into a paradigm of regenerative tourism. And what that looks like is supporting our local businesses, small businesses in particular, community organizations, building capacity, giving training, giving out grants in order to build a better destination and with the hope of transforming the way in which we're engaging our visitors, they in turn are engaging our residents and resident sentiment continues to rise. I wanted to ask you a question about uh, the, the Hawaii Tourism Authority had, has al always uh, handed out grants for festivals and stuff, ostensibly because it encourages repeat visitors. But let's face it, most festivals are also just wonderful for local residents. So I, I was wondering if you had a sense of what was going on in that part of the space. You know, that's actually a part of the contract is continuing to give out those types of grants. And so I think there's a lot of room in this partnership with HTA to look at the events that do a great job of engaging, again, both the visitor and the resident yeah. and thinking about, is there an opportunity to grow and create new experiences that continue to engage both of those audiences? Yeah, I can see where that would be also be a place where, where locals and visitors get to know each other. and. That, that's got to be more helpful to a visitor than, than any number of videos shown on an airplane. That's right. You know, I think the number one offering that Hawaii has to offer is in our residents. It's in our people, it's in our culture, it's in our ability to relate to strangers. And so I think the more opportunities there are for residents and visitors to find ways to find commonality, you know, that's a really great way to offer Hawaii as a teaching space to those who aren't familiar with our, our value set or our cultural foundations. Yeah, yeah. Have you had a chance to talk with the folks at uh, Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau who got another part of the uh, contract? You know, we are in regular contact with them and I think that's super important, right? To the extent that we're gonna be marketing this space and stewarding the destination, those concepts are gonna have to be congruous and really in line with one another. So yeah, there's an open relationship there and we're happy to work with them just as we are with HTA. Yeah, well, a lot of locals work in there too at HVCB. And also I noticed in reading their contract that there's a lot of stuff that people were associating with your part of the contract that are also embedded in what they're supposed to do. That's right, and I think that goes back to this idea that, you know, you can market a destination, but you've got to have a product to market. And so those two concepts really do have to speak to one another in order to make sure we're delivering this world-class destination that's attracting the very best of the visitors out there. And in particular, we really want to attract those mindful, thoughtful, respectful, culturally engaged types of visitors. And if we had to sum all of this up, and this is a direct quote from the, from the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement after this was decided, it's a new beginning. So let's watch it and see how it happens and how we can all help. It's coming up on 715 and we'll have more sunrise for you in a moment. All right, thanks a lot, Howard.